<laughs> who has been, um, in, in terms of the uh, castings, who has been the actor who most resembles, either physically or in terms of the way they've inhabited the role, um, the, the way you had it in your head? Um, well, par probably Peter Dinklage as, as Tyrion. Mm. Not that there aren't differences. I mean, if you, if you carefully read uh, the descriptions in the book, um, Tyrion in the books is, is actually shorter than Peter Dinklage. Um, so probably the first time Peter's been told he's, he's <laughs> too tall for a role, but uh, yeah. he, is, he is taller than Tyrion in the books, and he's considerably better looking. I mean, there's, the books make uh, a certain amount of uh, comment on the fact that, that Tyrion is not attractive sure. by conventional standards and uh, has that, that cross to bear in addition to his mm -hmm. uh, height. But, uh, but you know, Peter is, uh, is quite a good-looking man. Uh, and nonetheless, with these tiny exceptions, he, he is Tyrion. I mean, he has thoroughly inhabited that role. And he was really the only person. I mean, at that very first meeting I had with David and Dan, after we discussed all the story stuff, we got into playing the casting game and yeah. who, who would like, who would be good, who, could we get this person, could we look at that person. And when we got to Tyrion, it was it was Peter Dinklage. There was no one. We we never read anyone else for that role. We never had meetings with anyone else for that role. Mm -hmm. When we got the green light, we just went out and made an offer to Peter Dinklage, and thankfully he accepted. And you know, here we are, and uh, an Emmy and a Golden Globe later, yeah, and the Scream Awards. Never forget that where yeah. his head came out of a giant pool of water. <laughs> that was uh, memorable. <laughs> so um, he was great. Uh, Sean Bean is another. Yeah, uh, character. We did read some other people for the role of Ned, which was crucial. But uh, Sean Bean was always our first choice there, and uh, um, thankfully we were able to get him too. So. And do you find now that as you're writing, um, that w when you see the characters in your mind's eye, you're seeing the characters from the TV show, the geography? Are you see seeing it with the locations that they've used in the TV show? Nope. Mm -hmm. I think I understand that process, and I know that 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 has probably already happened for many, many millions of viewers and fans, um, but I don't think it happens. Uh, if you really know a book, then you have your own images in your head, and seeing a, a movie or a TV show doesn't, doesn't displace them. I mean, um, a, a book like Tolkien's Lord of the Rings, which I have first read when I was 13 years old, and I've read many, many times. I love Peter Jackson's movies, make no mistake. Yeah. Those are terrific movies, but when I sit down to read Fellowship of the Ring, as I as I still do every few years, because I love the book so much. Strider does not look like Viggo Mortensen to me. Yeah, he he looks like the image I've had in my head of Strider since he was thirteen. Mm. Uh, and the hobbits don't look like uh, you know Elijah Wood and and Sean Astin and all that. But those are they were great, mind you. They did a wonderful job. But uh, my own images are too firmly rooted. And yeah. if that's true for Tolkien. It's certainly true for my own books, so you know the the roots go very deep there. But for someone who isn't me, <laughs> I can easily see that happening, and and uh, the actors' uh, likenesses becoming what you think of when you when you think of this particular character. Um, there's like a famous saying, which I don't necessarily agree with, that everyone has a book inside of them. Um, of course, you've written since such a young age and such a variety of things. Do you think that Song of Ice and Fire is, is the book that you've always had, or the story that you've always in, had inside of you, or is it just a story in your canon? Well, I don't think there's any doubt now that it's my magnum opus. Um, it's the biggest thing I've ever done. It's the most ambitious thing I've ever done. And, and uh, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I, I hope that uh, I will finish these last two books and complete this series strongly. Mm. Um, and then I will live another 20, 30 years and write many more things, many different things in the, in the years to come. But I don't think I will ever again attempt anything on this scale. I mean, it's it's daunting. It's I, I began this in 1991, so. And did uh, you know the scale of it at that point? No, no. It it grew. It it grew in various stages. But I'm certainly trying to do it in seven. Uh, seven. It, seven would be great. It's it's you know seven gods, seven mm. kingdoms, seven books. There's a there's a certain 
elegance to that that I would like to retain. But that being said, the main thing is to tell the story, yeah. beginning, middle, and end, not to rush the story or to squeeze things or, or to do that, but, but to do the whole thing. Because it really is, no matter how many books you divide it up into, three books or five books or seven books, whatever, it's one story. Mm. One very complex story with a lot of viewpoint characters and interweaving, but still one story. Mm. If you had to say it was any one person's story. It's not. No? No. <laughs> Who, um, which character did you see most of yourself in? You know, uh, all of the viewpoint characters have elements of me in them. I think that's the only way you can really write a viewpoint character is you, you get inside someone's skin and, and all that. Is there uh, not one you love the most, though? Uh, well, I, I've always had a great deal of affection for Tyrion. Mm. Uh, I think Tyrion is probably who I would like to be, and uh, Sam is probably closer to who I actually am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not nearly as witty as Tyrion. Um, well, actually, I am as witty as Tyrion since I invent all of his witty things. <laughs> but it takes me ages to uh, to invent all of those yeah, witty things. Yeah, you can things. do it off yeah. the cuff. That's you have right. to labor yeah. over it. Like three days later, oh, my, that's what I should have said. That would have been great if I had said that. <laughs> I'm sure I'll uh, do this when I watch this interview uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, on Thronecast. I'll say, oh, God, I should have said that there. That would have been really funny. <laughs> And Tyrion, of course, would think of it right away and of would course. just uh, toss off those comments. <laughs>